to episode 11 of Watercolor Fundamentals, and today we're going to be talking about pigment and watercolor tube labels. I've got a bunch of different paints by some different makers here, and what I'd like to talk about today is how to read what's on these labels so you can perhaps avoid some mistakes I've made in the past in acquiring unknowingly um, duplicates because not always what is written on a label is exactly um, what you're getting. Different brands will name paints um, with very pretty names, but there is a possibility that you if you already have a collection of paint, you might already have um, the same paint. So what I hope is that in this episode, you'll, you'll learn a little bit about what's written on these labels. Uh, in some cases, there's an awful lot of information on the labels. And in some cases, it's just, um, just enough. So let's get started here. Um, so with respect to the watercolor, I would say there's four main things that um, you may want to be aware of. Um, one is going to be the pigment number. Pigment number is going to the, uh, the type of pigment that's in your paint, um, whether it's going to be a blue pigment, a red pigment, a yellow pigment, and this is gonna be pretty consistent across a variety of different mediums and the same pigment for you know ultramarine is going to be in acrylic oil watercolor um, and other mediums so you're dealing with the same thing the main difference is going to be the binder um, the binder in the case of watercolor is something called gum arabic which you know allows us to um, let this paint sit in a palette it'll dry out and then all we need to do is re-wet it and we can get at the pigment again but I'm not really planning to talk too much about that. Um, but pigment number is important because it tells us, you know, what is that specific pigment. So regardless of what the name of the pigment is or what the name of the paint tube is, to be more clear, um, we really want to know what the actual pigment number is. And I've got a really good example right here because I've got two, two paints. Um, you see one is by um, a paint maker in Oregon, in West Lynn, Oregon, M. Graham. And the other is by uh, a paint maker in Seattle, Washington, Daniel Smith. Uh, you can see very clearly on here, one is called Quinacridone Rust, and the other is, well, sorry, this one is almost done here, but nevertheless, Quinacridone Burnt Orange. So, you know, I will encounter numerous times um, when I'm teaching, I'll say, you know, quinacridone burnt orange is on my supply list. And some well, I don't have that. Um, you know, they may have this, you know, and they're like, well, I need to get this instead. Well, you don't really. Um, because if you look on these, and I have to bend this a little bit, if you look there, you turn it a bit, it says PO48, okay? That number, PO48, refers to pigment orange 48. That is the actual pigment that's in here. There is no quinacridone burnt orange in here. It's PO48. Hmm, interesting, okay? If I go to this tube, so I actually had this tube first. I use primarily Daniel Smith paints now, but nevertheless, I did have this um, prior to it. And I had seen um, quinacridone burnt orange being a color that was being used quite a bit, and I thought I needed it. But when I started learning a little bit more about pigments, look what's right there. It is the exact same pigment, P048. So knowing what the pigment name is, or the pigment number to be more clear, is pretty helpful. 
because you can learn a lot about um, what's actually inside this tube. So the first one I want to talk about is that, the pigment number. And we can look on any of these. Here's a, a fuller tube. Another thing to note is that this is Lunar Blue by Daniel Smith. And if we look on here, there's not always just one pigment in here. In this one, we can see that it has pigment black, 11, Mars black, pigment blue, 15, phthalo blue. Okay, I'm just going to say phthalo because I might mispronounce that. Thalo cyanine? <laughs> Anyways, but there's two pigments in here. And the Lunar series from um, Daniel Smith is, is really quite lovely. They, they do granulate quite heavy. And that's largely due to the Mars black that's in here, which is a highly granulating pigment. And I'll talk a little bit about granulating in a moment here. But So do be aware of the fact that not there is no lunar blue pigment. This is a formula that Daniel Smith made up. They have a whole lunar series. And in them, you'll find usually more than one pigment in here. So, And you'll see this in other paints as well, sap greens and other convenience mixtures will have multiple pigments in there. And it's always a good thing to know what's, what's in this, right? And then the vehicle is the gum arabic solution. Sometimes they'll um, indicate this on the labels and sometimes they don't. Right. Similar to the quinacridone burnt orange, here's a, a lovely blue by Windsor and Newton. It's the Antwerp blue. It's like, ooh, Antwerp blue. What blue is that? Well, if you want to find out, we go now and we look. Pigment blue 27. So if you don't know what that specific one is, it's actually Prussian blue. Um, so... Windsor Newton also sells a Prussian blue, uh, and they sell an Antwerp blue. And the blues are similar, and it has been treated slightly differently. I'm not quite sure what the process is, uh, how they differentiate it. Um, this is a little bit lighter um, in its mass tone than an actual Prussian blue, but they both have very similar qualities. So, you know, if you already had a Prussian blue and you saw a list and it said, oh, you need Antwerp blue, you don't necessarily need the both of them. You just need one. Um, so, so there's a good reason to learn a little bit about your pigment numbers. Actually, let me see if I got another one here. Um, here is a Schminky. And this one labels up here, so you can see there as well. It's more than one pigment, pigment yellow 65 and pigment brown 41. Okay, so pigment number is going to be something you're gonna to wanna to look for. Here's a Da Vinci tube. They list their pigments right there. And Antwerp Blue, Schminky, Holbein list theirs right here. So this is cadmium green deep, and then they list their pigments right there. So pigment yellow 35, pigment green 7, and it looks like they also have pigment green 18 in there. I'm assuming the comma 18 means it's an extension of the PG. I'm not entirely sure on that, so please don't totally quote me on that. But the main thing you want to know is that this has more than one pigment in it. Okay, so that's pigment number. The next thing is transparency rating. So that is going to be whether something is transparent, semi-transparent, semi-opaque, or opaque. Now, with all of these things, even if you have an opaque paint, you, know, you have enough water in it, it's going to wash out fairly transparent. You're still going to see some of the white of the paper or, you know, a, a different colored wash underneath. The opacity, I would really take it into consideration when you're dealing with much thicker consistencies of the paint. So you'll start to see uh, it not seem so luminous. 
Okay. Now, the interesting thing about transparency rating is it's not always indicated on the paint tube. So, you know, if I go and grab the a Daniel Smith pigment, it lists a number of things on it, but it doesn't actually list the transparency. Uh, same for the M. Graham paints. Now, this is an older tube. Maybe they've updated it. I don't know. Uh, and also for the, oh, my, my bad, the Da Vinci paint actually lists it verbally as transparent. So that's good that that's there. And then a lot of the paint makers will use some kind of code um, on, their, on their paints. So Holbein has a little code right there, a little visual circle with a slash through it. If it's a circle that's clear, it means it's transparent. If it's clear with a line through it, it's semi-transparent. If it's a circle with half solid, then it's semi-opaque. And if it's a full solid circle, it's an opaque paint. So personally, I think all the paints in my palette are either transparent or semi-transparent. I don't use any pigments that lean towards um, semi-opaque or opaque. Uh, not by plan, it just seems to be by um, how things have ended up. So let's see here, where else? Um, Windsor Newton, they use a little box system right here. So they have a box and then they do similarly, they'll have a diagonal line through it. So this is transparent. A line through it would be semi-transparent, a line through it, and solid half um, would be semi-opaque, and then a full square, um, full solid square would be opaque. And then on the Schminky, they use the same convention as Windsor Newton. So this has a little um, square that's solid on the top, so that means it's semi opaque. Here. To compare, here's another schminky, and you can see here they have a square with a line through it, which means it's semi-transparent. Okay, so this is how we can look at our tubes and see what the quality of it is without having to go on the internets. The information is actually there for you to see. Now, you know, transparency rating doesn't show up on the Daniel Smith paints, and it doesn't show up on the M. Grams. So Now another one that gets um, <laughs> people all fired up uh, is the light fast rating, okay? So light fastness, ultimately the rule I follow is I avoid known fugitive paints. So, you know, Opera Rose uh, is one and permanent, uh, not permanent, but Elysrian Crimson. So these are known fugitive pigments. Uh, they look quite lovely when we wash them out. They do fade quite a bit as they start to dry, but more importantly, over time, these paints are, if you use them, you know, in, a, in its pure form, they are going to fade a lot. So if you are just a little hobby painter and not too interested in ever selling your work and you know you got a good deal on that paint, um, Elysian Crimson or whatnot, then you know, fine, feel free. No, it's really no big deal. But if you're interested in selling your work or you are actively selling your work, it's a really good idea to try to use um, ingredients that are, are going to, to last. Now, uh, Different makers have different rating systems that they'll use to describe their, their light fast rating. Uh, on Schminky, they use a star rating system. So three stars, they go all the way up to five stars on Schminky. So three stars means it's light fast. Anything lower, two or one, uh, one would be fugitive, two would be limited light fastness, four would be good, and then five would be extremely good. Uh, I don't have many schminky paints. Both of these have three stars. They're both light fast paints. 
Um, I've used the translucent orange quite a bit. Um, I, I really do love it. Though, actually, on a, on a similar note, I um, also am now aware that the pigment in this, P071, I use transparent pyrrole orange in my watercolor palette by Daniel Smith. And I started using that when I found out that it was the same pigment. So um, light fastness on these. And then other paints like the um, Da Vinci here, they list light fastness up there and they give it a rating. So, you know, one would be good, two um, is, you know, less good, <laughs> less good. Good thing this isn't a, a, a grammar um, video, but they, so they use that sort of convention. So three, four would be worse, that sort of thing. Um, I believe that M. Graham uses a similar system, light fastness. So this means it's very light fast. Daniel Smith does a similar thing as well, where they list their light fastness on there. Okay, so I generally will go, you know, a two is okay, um, one is preferred. Uh, as long as it's kind of one of those two, I don't get too bent out of shape over it. And on the Windsor and Newton, they do something a little bit different. So they have a permanence listed here. And you see that it says permanence A. So they have like four categories, uh, A, 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 B, and C, right? So this would fall firmly in the top two of their light fast ratings. So that's all good. And then the Holbein, they use a star system with three being the, the best and then two and then one. So their light fast rating is listed right there. And then lastly is another quality called um, the staining of the paint. What that staining means is the ability to lift the paint off the paper once it goes down onto the paper or uh, the pigment's ability to bind to the paper. So if you've experienced, you know, you put uh, a stroke down onto your paper and even if you try to get in there, you know, moderately quickly and extend it, you see uh, lines forming, there's a good chance you're using a highly staining pigment. So as soon as that pigment comes in contact with the paper, it's already staining it. And it's, it can be difficult to, well, next to impossible to clear those lines and make these washes look smooth. Um, ones that I am aware of as being highly staining would be like the phthalo blues and phthalo greens. I don't generally use those um, in their pure form. There are convenience mixtures that I have that have a little bit of them uh, as part of a convenience mixture, and that's okay. Um, but yeah, I've never personally had an awful lot of success with the straight phthalos. Um, but as far as the paint makers go, they don't really list too much of that information as far as the staining goes. It's generally about the permanence or the light fastness, the quality, um, of the transparency, the pigment number, that tends to be around uh, on a number of them, but it's really uh, the schminky that, in my opinion, gets the prize for having all the information, or all the main information on the label, because they include this little triangle here. And if it's a clear triangle, it's a non-staining pigment, if it's a split triangle like this, it's semi-staining. And if it's a solid triangle, it's very staining. So you can see both on these has a semi-staining. I think that most of the paints that, that I use um, are either, are basically semi-staining. So, so there's a, a fair bit about some of these labels. Um, let's see if I can fit this on here. Now, you can go to various websites for uh, your paint maker and see if that information is available. 
it should be noted that, that these are all artist quality paints. Uh, so it makes sense that a lot of this information is going to be available. Perhaps you have a kit of paint that you've acquired from, let's say, Dessert's or Michael's or you know any one of these kind of big box um, art supplies, crafts, stores. And you look at your tube after watching this and you're like, I don't see any of this information in there. Well, those are highly likely to be um, kind of student quality paints. Um, the assumption is you're just going to get some paint and try some watercolor out. Um, so, you know, that information might not be there for you. I, I can't explain why they don't put it on there. I don't know what they're, they don't want us to know. But, um, yeah, if it's not on the label, then, you know, I, I, it's, you're, you're not really going to be able to find out. You might be able to go on a website um, for whatever specific brand you're looking for and see if you can find it. Um, now that you know what to look for. But the other thing is some makers, like for example, Daniel Smith, they have these charts. Now, I'm sorry, this is quite zoomed in right now. Um, so Daniel Smith doesn't have an awful lot on the label. They've got kind of the, the main things, but they do list all their information as far as what their codes mean. So that one is excellent, two, very good, three, fair, four, fugitive. And then they will list the staining on these cards, okay? So one, non-staining, two, low staining, three, medium staining, four, high staining. I don't know why this isn't on the tube. It would be really great if it is. So you can see here, this Paraline Scarlet, for example, would be a very good light fast rating. It would be medium staining. And then this next one with the Y refers to granulation, which is something I'll talk about in just a moment here. And it says that it is a granulating pigment, but it does have varying degrees. And then the last little bit here, they have three ranks of transparency, transparent, semi-transparent, and opaque, where we noticed with a couple of others before they also included a semi-opaque as well as an option. So you can see what that indication is there. And that's for them. And a lot of the makers will have uh, similar charts like this. This is uh, just a, a dot card set that I acquired from um, Daniel Smith some time ago. And this has been, been very handy, but finding out the chart for your paint maker, it, they are out there um, and it's readily available. Now, the last thing that I'm gonna talk about is the granulation. And that's going to be very specific to the pigment quality itself. So, for example, I was talking about that lunar black, uh, lunar blue earlier, and it has the Mars black pigment in it. And Mars black is a highly granulating pigment. Um, I'm just going to actually flip through here and find, or I won't. I was going to look for uh, Mars Black as a pigment. But some known pigments that will granulate cerulean blue, when that pigment is quite a granulating one, ultramarine blue as well does have granulating properties. So the granulation is when you look at here, right? you can see how the pigment kind of clumps together a little bit. Um, that's going to be what the granulation looks like. If it's, you know, all smooth, that sort of thing. If you're seeing something that's beyond the texture of the paper, then you know you have a granulating paint. For example, look at this, right? Yes, granulation. You see all these little clumps of pigment in there? That's granulation. Now, I used to really like granulation. Now I, I'm kind of moved away from it. So all the pigments in my palette are non-granulating with the exception of the fact I do have um, ultramarine blue. But then we come back to this idea of yes, varying degrees. So ultramarine blue does granulate, um, but it doesn't granulate uh, a massive amount. So, so hopefully, 
this information is of use to you. I hope you learn a couple things today. Um, so yeah, we talked about pigments, the pigment number, transparency rating, light fastness, and staining. I will include in the notes um, in the, for the video some links to a couple of the, the paint makers uh, with some information on, on their labels that hopefully might help. But other than that, thank you very much. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. I hope it helps you learn a little bit about watercolor. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. Paint on, my friends. Bye for now.